All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time again. At the beginning of the week, we are going to take a look at the top coins to sell at auction for the week ending January 19th of 2020. Man, probably one of the busiest weeks I've seen in quite a while, in spite of the fact that we've seen the Florida Fun Auction, hosted by Heritage, uh, take place uh, about 10 short days ago. And here we are. We are getting into the thick of... Uh, yeah, just that, that time of year where, you know, income tax time, people are getting money back, so we're going to see a lot of big sales happen here in the next 30 to 45 days. Um, it's just a lot of things happening, and we're going to go and run through the entire gamut of coins on this list. And I'm happy to say we have over 20 coins to talk about. That's how active it was. Usually I average in that kind of 13 to 15 range of coins, but man, really busy week, a lot of great stuff. Uh, some surprising inclusions into this list that I think you guys will appreciate. Uh, but first, before we go ahead and get started with the Monday Market Report, as always, i got to do my YouTube thing. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If this is your first time here, welcome. And as always, yeah, go ahead and hit that bell if you want the, uh, uh, the up-to-date skinny on all the videos that come out as they're being uploaded. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. And, uh, yeah, as always, we're going to get started with a few notable eBay sales from the past week. Uh, in no particular order, uh, they, these were all pretty substantial coins that sold. Uh, a lot of the coins, again, that are highlighted on the list are uh, coins that generally sell through eBay, Heritage. Great Collections is, is a normal one every week. We're going to go ahead and take a look at quite a few coins from there. Uh, and they're all going to be graded. All right, um, to kind of give you an idea of what's selling. So the first coin out there that we're going to talk about on from eBay is going to be this 1949S Jefferson Nickel. Now, again, I've talked about it once. I'll keep saying it because usually there's always someone new jumping aboard my channel. But with Jefferson Nickels, the one thing that makes certain coins very valuable is the strike. Now, there are certain dates through this 80-year uh, release in which uh, the strikes are just not there, okay? Mid-50s, early 60s is a great example. Um, and usually with these coins, the hallmark of any great strike will be fully defined lines on the reverse, right on those set of stairs on Mont Monticello. Uh, generally, these are comprised of six full lines that go across, and usually the graders, whether it's PCGS or NGC, We'll grade these coins based off of that criteria. Now, if there's like a little nick or something that's in interruptive of the complete set of steps, then they will not be graded as such. All right, so the 49S here is a PCGS Mid-State 66 Plus full steps. It's also got that neat gold shield. And this one sold on eBay for $1,250 January 19th. A really nice coin. Obviously, this is going to go into some sort of like either typeset or a registry set type of uh, collection. All right, pretty nice coin. The next one that I want to talk about here today is going to be a 1943 quarter. This is going to be a, uh, a, a practice in um, just, you never know when the next high dollar coin is going to show up. This coin doesn't necessarily have to be graded, but it was graded for the sake of this particular sale on eBay. 1943, doubled die obverse, FS103 catalog through the Cherry Picker's Guide. Take a look at this coin, the obverse. You're going to see such incredible doubling on In God We Trust and Liberty, and then also on the date as well. This one right here is an NGC AU53. Like I said, and I've always said this before, these doubled dies, these huge coins from the 1930s, and into the 1940s are some of the most sought after coins in any condition okay and they're worth a lot of money this one right here has circulated as you can see you know there's a lot of luster loss you know it, it really does look like a circulated coin and this one sold for two thousand seven hundred fifty eight dollars and ninety cents if you find some of these fantastic double dies in these earlier washington quarters i guarantee you Go ahead and sell it. You're going to make yourself a lot of money. And it just goes to show you, if you're a type of person that likes to buy up scrap silver, man, take a second look at these coins. 
get yourself a nice magnifier, take a look at these coins, all right, and ensure that you're not leaving money on the table, okay? And then this one right here, almost $3,000 worth of coin, and it's not even, it's not even a top-end grade. It's incredible. All right, the next and final coin that we're going to talk about from eBay is going to be this 1914D Lincoln Cent. This is the key date in the series, of course, uh, among a few other key dates. This one right here is a PCGS AU55, all right, which is a really nice grade for this coin, which generally has a weak strike. This one sold for $1,525 on the 13th. Pretty phenomenal looking example, and uh, this would be kind of like the grade and coin that I would personally buy for a really nice Lincoln Cent collection. Yeah, you know, once you get into the mint state grades, these things jump up exponentially, and they become out of reach for a lot of you know the general hardworking folks um, who don't make like six, seven figures a year. Um, you know, this is a really nice, pleasing example for any collection, and it's resellable. You can liquidate it anytime you want and make as much money as what you spend into it. Pretty cool coin here. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some notable Great Collection sales. Uh, as you guys know, Great Collections hosts a weekly auction. Uh, so there's a lot of great stuff that ended up on here. A lot of unexpected material. For example, this 1993D Lincoln Memorial scent right here is a top-end graded coin. It is a PCGS Mid-State 69 full red example. Okay, it has an oxidized one bit, and that's why it's full red. This one sold for $871.88. Phenomenal looking coin. And uh, again, I, I've, you know, I, I don't mean to seem kind of like uh, repeating myself in all this, but every single date of coin has something to offer. Okay, there's a lot of value. All right. Generally, with these type of coins, they're only sellable on these online auctions. Um, local coin dealers won't buy these up. Uh, because they, they don't deal in the registry set, popularity, and that's where this one fits in. All right, so the next one that we have here is going to be a 1987 Lincoln Memorial scent. This one is a PCGS Mint State 69 full red. Really pretty example, just like the coin before it. And this is where, th where things can get out of hand, all right? Uh, this one sold for $5,242.50. A 1987 Lincoln cent that is generally just like overproduced into the hundreds of millions uh, sold for in excess of $5,000. Okay, and this is probably the most extreme example that you'll ever come across. And if you guys think you're like, oh, I could do that too. I could find these coins, send them out for grading. Keep in mind, the coin has to be, be virtually flawless and with probably one of the strongest strikes that you'll ever see on a coin. So, a heat caution, you can end up spending lots of money and not getting anything in return. All right, it could be a Debbie Downer. It really can. But this one right here is sold at the most extreme level at $5,242. All right, so the next coin that we have here is going to be a 1973 Lincoln Memorial Sense. There's a lot of Lincoln Sense on the list today, and uh, that's phenomenal. Okay, uh, it just goes to show you the health of the market. This is a PCGS Mint State 67 Plus. It's a full red coin. This one brought home $1,462.50. Again, another registry set type coin. All right, so the next coin that we have here for you is one of my favorites. I feel like I've talked about this coin quite frequently in the last few weeks because there's just been really nice examples, both raw and graded, that have come out to the marketplace. But we have here a 1972 double die obverse FS 101. Uh, so this is the die number one for this particular variety. It's a PCGS Mint State 67 Plus, full red, and this one sold for six thousand two hundred forty nine dollars and thirty eight pennies. Simply sublime. There's just no other word to describe it. If you cannot afford a 69s at a nice grade. Go ahead and take a look at a mid mid state type 1972. They, the doubling is just as radical as the 69S, and it's a, a crowd pleaser for sure. All right, and uh, continuing on the tradition of Lincoln Sense, we have a 58D. Uh, of course, another registry set type coin. Uh, this is a PCGS Mint State 67 Plus full red. 
that sold for $1,293.75. This is one of those dates that's kind of on like, you know, my buyer beware list. So if you're the type of person that's actually buying up some of these 1950s Denver or San Francisco minted Lincoln wheat cents at the highest possible grade, keep in mind, these coins are continuing to drop in value uh, because there's just kind of like this record number of submissions for these 50s decade coins. Uh, keep an eye out for these, of course. Uh, it's going to get to a bottoming point, and it's probably going to see some slow growth from that point. I don't think we're quite there yet. So continue, uh, continue to see these coins kind of like drift in value a little bit. Uh, on another note, we have a 1950 Lincoln Wheat Cent. Uh, this is one of the tougher dates. Uh, generally, Philadelphia minted 1950s Lincolns are really tough to find in high grades. Um, the quality just isn't there uh, from the U.S. Mint's standpoint in, in terms of their Q&A or quality and quality assurance. Uh, this one right here is a PCGS Mint State 67 full red. It is also CAC certified. And this one brought home $1,753.88. Pretty nice coin here. And then finally, for the uh, the Lincoln Cents, we got a 1943 Steely. Man, I love talking about these. Uh, they're one of my favorites, and the prices just don't drop on these because of what they are. There is a load of desirability when it comes to the one-shot, kind of like short series of uh, war-type coins. Whether it's this one or another coin that you're going to see here momentarily, from the Jefferson Nickel age of World War II coins. This one right here sold for $3,937.50. Of course, it helps that it's a PCGS Mint State 68 CAC certified. This is a bomb, and it's highly unlikely that you're going to see these coins drop in value because they are just so desirable. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some nickel action, and we have a 1981 P. Uh, of course, you know, when we're associating, you know, any sort of nickel with a market report in which we feature high dollar coins, 1981 just isn't the typical, okay? This is this is the exact opposite of what we would expect to see on the list. But sure enough, okay, Jefferson Nickel groups are a very dedicated bunch. They look for coins with a strong strike. In the case of this one, it's a PCGS Mint State 67 full stepper. So it's got nice defined lines and it's sold for $1,805.62, all right, so we got that one there. The next one that we have here is one of those uh, those toughies, okay, the, the ones that if you're able to find them in full steps, they're worth a boatload of money, life-changing money even. This one is a 1961 um, Jefferson Nickel. It's an NGC Mint State 65, but here's the thing, it doesn't have a complete six stepper, uh, which they designate either five or six, this one is a five full steps, so it's not a full six full steps where all the money is, but even still, even at a five full steps, this coin brought home $1,822.50. Uh, do not overlook a five full step nickel. If it looks a little bit weak, you might have something that's still worth money, okay? There is a little bit of a safety net. In these late 50s early 60s Jefferson Nichols if you have something that's pretty close all right just a little uh, word of caution don't toss it back just yet and then I wanted to talk about the uh, the one war nickel that we have on the list uh, you know much like the 43 steel cent this is a 1945 D uh, Jefferson Nickel as you guys know this is the 35% uh, silver manganese composition coin uh, that is so popular today. This one is a PCGS Mint State 68 plus full steps. How in the world do we get such a high grade on a coin this old? It's pretty crazy. But here's an even crazier part. It sold for $16,312.50. Wow, that's a lot of money for a nickel, especially one from this age in which, you know, Mint State 67s with full steps can be had for a few hundred dollars so if you have one that's really nice keep in mind there's a lot of value in these silver war nickels pretty nice here all right so the next nickel we're going to talk about and we have a couple really neat reverse 
varieties, okay? That's also in the Cherry Pickers Guide. We have a 1939S Jefferson Nickel. It's the second year of the Nickel series for the Jefferson design. This one is what's called the reverse of 1938. So you have the reverse of 1938, you have the reverse of 1940. The big differentiation point between the two is on the reverse of 1938, you're going to have the wavy steps on Monticello. All right, whereas on the 1940, they're more str uh, uh, stronger, they're more clearly defined. Plus, you also have these lines to the left and right of the set of steps. So on this one, you have the reverse of 1938. It's a PCGS Mint State 67 full steps, and it's sold for $3,504.38. On the other side of it all, we have a 1939. This one right here is a reverse of 1940. So you can tell the difference just on those reverse steps from one to the other. Okay, you have straighter, more clearly defined steps on this one. This is a PCGS Mint State 68 full step, so it is a full grade point higher. And this one sold for $8,808.75. That's a lot of money. But keep in mind, the Jefferson Nickel community pays all the money in the world for coins like this. All right, so if you're talking like a super high-end investment piece, take a look at this 1927D Buffalo Nickel. I'm really excited to talk about this coin. It's a PCGS Mid-State 66. Um, generally, coins from the 20s, all right, are a little bit kind of weakly struck, and, uh, you know, they, they're struck with deteriorated dyes most of the time. But this one right here sold for $20,812.50. That's a lot of money. Again, it's all life-changing stuff, but it just goes to show you the strength of the secondary market, okay? Collectors have deep pockets for some of the rarest coins, and this one is no exception. Pretty nice example here. All right, so we have a couple dimes, and uh, I can't really believe that these even made it on the list. Um, how about a 1960D uh, Roosevelt dime? This is a PCGS Mint State 68 full torch or full bands. Uh, this one also exhibits some original toning on there. Not the most attractive toning that I would say, you know, uh, this one is just just shows originality and that's all it's used for it sold for six thousand one hundred eighty eight dollars and sixty two cents now it might just be me but isn't 1960 roosevelt dimes some of the most commonly produced silver dimes in existence anything from the 60s is widely available but finding one that is this high of a grade with a full strike to exhibit the full bands on there is just tough okay and um uh, yeah, you wouldn't think a Roosevelt 9 from this age would be worth six grand, but sure enough, someone paid all the money in the world. Um, in addition, this other coin right here is uh, just as a marvel. Yeah, it's a 1946. It's the first year of the, of the Roosevelt Dime series. This one is also exhibiting a little bit of toning action on there. Not my personal favorite, but it is on there. It's a PCGS Mint State 68 full bands. And it also sold for $2,562.75. Just truly marvelous. Um, Roosevelt Dimes, I'm not going to say that it's like coming up, but people are taking advantage of the grading popularity of the, you know, the pennies and the nickels. And they're kind of using it on the Roosevelt Dimes. And then we're coming up with some pretty amazing coins as we see here. Now, as you guys know, we have the new West Point Quarters that's coming out this year, okay, in circulation. And, and the one big thing, the, the big talking point, is that the U.S. Mint is going to add an extra design element onto the coin that's going to be unique, all right? It's going to be a little what they call privy mark. It's generally used on Canadian and also um, British coinage, okay? It's just kind of like a little tiny little stamp on there. That they add to the master die, um, you know, uh, on the Canadian, like, maple leaves, they would add, like, a little maple leaf privy mark. It's so tiny, uh, but you could still see it with the naked eye. Now, they're doing something like that for the 75th anniversary of, um, I guess, World War II, all right? So, they're going to do, like, a V75 or something like that on the obverse of the coin. But it also begs a little question. 
uh, how is this going to affect the market for the outgoing 2019s? Well, we have one coin here that did sell. It's the 2019 West Point San Antonio Missions. Now, this one is a PCGS Mid-State 64. It's one of six of their original first discovery coins. Now, as you guys know, PCGS puts out this bounty uh, for the fir first ever West Point quarter of that type to come in for a grading. So there were six coins that came all at the same time. So they have to designate it as like, you know, one of six. All right, this one right here. One of the lower grades, and it's still sold for $1,050.75. The popularity is going to be coming back, and it is going to affect the price of the 2019s. Um, not in the negative way, but we might see some more desirability in some of those coins. Like I said, all the coins are still circulating out there. They are... Um, they are slowly diminishing in grade every time the coin gets circulated and passed through many hands. So finding some of the like jemmy coins that are like 64, 65 and up is going to be really difficult. But we are going to see a resurgence in the 2019 West Point coins as well. All right, because they're just going to start to disappear at all the highest grades. And especially all those like first week of discovery slabbed coins. Those are going to start to disappear as well. So how about Bicentennial Quarters? All right, it's one of my favorite designs. Um, you know, it is undoubtedly the originator of circulating rarity, not rarity, but circulating commemorative coins, kind of like what we've seen in the State Quarter Program and the National Park Series. Um, before all that even transpired, we had the Bicentennial Quarter with the Drummer Boy Reverse. This is cool. This one right here is a PCGS. Mint State 68, it does exhibit a little bit of kind of like a yellowish, bluish toning on there. Uh, and it's sold for $4,051.12. Um, not typical, okay? It's kind of hard to find some that are above a Mint State 65. You know, I'm still coming across uh, Mint State examples right at a change. So finding one at all that grades higher than a 65 is prohibitively difficult. Uh, but you can see the... Um, just the overall result of it all, you know, $4,000 later, and then you have a coin that, you know, is going into good hands. So we got a couple coins left here before we're all set and done. Uh, we have a 1954D, all right? Kind of like one of your cookie cutter high mintage silver quarters out there. This one is, is a PCGS Mint State 67. Features some pretty nice, decent toning, I would say. Uh, it's pretty original. It's a uh, a Sunset Collection Provenance piece, all right, so it came from that collection. Sold for $2,339.99. Pretty nice coin that's going to end up, I guess, into another registry, that's for sure. And how about we end it off on the, um, the biggest coin that I've talked about so far this year, but in quite a long time. So, Great Collections had the pleasure of hosting... Uh, or consigning, I guess, um, the ultimate collection of Rattlers and Old Holders. Okay, this all came from one collection. And um, these older, I guess, 1980s style PCGS holders, okay, are extremely desirable in the marketplace today. However, we have a 1905 Barber Quarter that is encased in one of these old Rattlers. And uh, some of you aren't aware but generally, the coins of this era are severely undergraded. But the fact that this one came back as a 68 through PCGS at the time speaks a lot. Could it possibly be a mid-state 69 or 68 plus? I don't think the coin will ever be resubmitted uh, to, sit, to kind of test that theory. It's hard to say. I mean, the coin is just drop-dead gorgeous, guys. This one right here is also what they call the first generation holder. It's got some pretty nice original toning throughout the obverse and reverse of the coin. Um, and it's sold for a $101,251.12. Oh my god, that is an insane amount of money for what is considered a really common date. For the Barber Quarter series. 
anything that's produced in Philadelphia, short of what, 1914 and 1915, I believe, are all really, really easy to obtain in pretty good grades. Now, it's not going to be a 68. As you can see, this one sold in excess of 100K. Oh, my God. But that is how we're going to end up the Monday Market Report for the week ending January 19th. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll love to hear what you guys think about all of the great booty coming from this. Uh, but anyways, it was a pleasure. So as always, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and Coinaholics, we are discovering together. Enjoy your day off if you have it. And uh, yeah, have a nice, restful, easy week. And I'll see you on the next one.